Hey, hey, it's CDA, and welcome back to Patreon. The last time we survived our first winter, and now apparently the royal tax increases. Okay, I didn't really plan that out, but this just popped up when I was talking. So, what do we want? The crown has endeavors all around the globe, and it's it is it's the duty of each subject to help make that happen. From now onward, the king is raising taxes on certain goods. Um, sure, I guess we will get a tr apple trade fee increase to 15%. But considering we're not actually trading anything and we don't want to piss off our peasants and laborers, considering we only have peasants at the moment, I suppose this is just fine. Anyway, what I was about to say is that we are already preparing for our next winter right now. And I think I'm actually going to take off the person in the forester hut for a little while over here. We have a small st uh, stockpile of lumber we are pretty doing pretty good on firewood and we are doing very well on food at least i hope this is going to be enough a couple of our people will probably be growing up in the middle of the winter um not entirely sure how happy i am about that because they will be wanting to be fed and adults i think adults eat considerably more than the children do um and as you can see, it's already starting to get cold, so that is going to be a problem. Now, the reason I actually took this person off the forester for a moment is so we have an additional worker, so we can actually make sure we are transporting stuff around our base. I'm actually going to put that person back in now, I think, just so we are back to where we are. We don't have any herbs, and our people are in danger of getting sick, but we quite frankly don't have anything to do about that. Um, well, actually, what we could do is we can build a herbalist hut that needs to be close to the gatherer's hut and the forester. It's a giant building, actually. Um, let's see, where can we put it? So this is actually a pretty decent spot, it seems. Let's put it down there. Uh, we are going to need some lumber for that. We have all the materials we need. Let's actually stop these way signs for a moment. We have no priority for that. And hopefully this should be fairly easy to build, even though we only have one worker at the moment. So for the simple reason that it's fairly close to everything else. Um, yeah, probably going to make a little jump until something interesting happens. Because right now we don't want to overextend. We want to just wait around for people to grow up. We have quite a lot of food, so I think we're going to to do just fine this winter around uh, food um, and I think the firewood is under control as well so now it's just about surviving this winter waiting for a few people to grow up and now we can take it from there well I was just waiting around for something to ha happen or at least trying to get through the winter and we were doing just fine when this popped up so apparently there is unrest on the mainland sorry are we, re we were receiving word of civil unrest on the mainland the people there are rioting should we ignore it or interfere Send whatever we can afford to the king, we remain loyal. Well, that's a pretty giant boost to loyalty, but we're at 100% already. And to be honest, this coins is quite expensive. Or we can keep quiet about it to prepare everything to accommodate incoming refugees. And we actually are getting seven immigrants. That could be very interesting because that will allow us to actually give a huge boost to our population. Um... Yeah, I say we give this a shot. Might be a very bad idea. Um, so now we have a huge housing shortage, but that is something we can fix. Uh, we also have now 15 adults. Um, so this is either going to be very nice or a complete disaster. So let's make sure we have someone set to food. We already have someone in the herbalist hut, so that's really cool. We are also going to assign at least one person to the fisherman hut, so we have some additional fish going on. Um, how many workers does that leave us with? Um, actually, let's assign someone to be a dedicated carrier as well. And then we have five workers, which to be honest is a very nice amount. Uh, the real question is, how happy are we with the fact that we are getting um, seven new people at the start of the winter? Well, um, like I said, it's going to be either a very good or a very bad idea. Let's make sure we have these waste sands being constructed. And let's build some houses. We are going to build some more of these. Um, let's keep these fairly close together. How many of them do we actually need? So we have 11 families now, really? Uh, okay. Um, apparently none of these people are related. So that's... Um, I guess that makes sense in a way. 
let me get up the grid. There we go. We do want to make sure everything is nice and aligned. There we go. Um, so we have four houses with two more. So that's six. Are we really going to have to build five more houses? Jeez. Um, all right. All right. We can do that. No problem. We could actually build... No, let's let's just make this our residential area. I think that should be fine. Um, yeah. Let's build a little bit towards this direction as well. And then I think what we'll do is... Actually, lost count now. So this is eight. We want three more. So let's do it like this. Let's make sure we have a road to go along with that. Now, this is actually a pretty hefty investment in terms of stuff we need. We are also going to need stone for that. Um, we have a pretty decent amount of stone still, so we should be fine, I think, I hope. Like I said, this is a pretty huge gamble, but I'm hoping it will pay off. Um, we are going to have to supply all of these houses with wood, though, so that's going to be... Um, Thing. We could actually expand this and have another person work here. That leaves us with four workers and two carriers. So I think that should be a nice balance. Let's find out. I do want to make sure we insulate these houses as quick as we can. We are out of herbs pretty much all the time uh, although we do have a pretty efficient 94% over here uh, we can of course boost that but again that will cost us money uh, we are probably going to get a pretty decent amount of income now there's actually no one living in this house did I miscount these are 6 8 11 we have 11 families oh we now have 9 families so they did move in together. You could have told me that before you had a house built for you. Okay, well, anyway, then at least that means we will have a few spare houses for the moment. A um, little bit of a waste of uh, resources there, but um, I'm actually upgrading the houses with people in them now. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what actually happens to these houses uh, with no one in them. Now we have all of them insulated, so that's nice. And so far we are doing just fine when it comes to food. I think we're actually still keep well, no, we're not keeping up with the production in the winter. Um, but we have such a nice buffer of food, and I don't think we'll have any problems surviving this winter. That also means that we can probably consider... Okay, now we have 18 adults. So we have 7 workers. That's... Maybe assign one more to the herbalist hut. And then we have six. So what I think we want to do is build one more forester. Uh, production buildings, that's what I'm looking for. Let me see. Um, fertility and yeah, so... What we probably want to do is build one more four-star over here. Um, let's just stick those two together. Actually, the fertility of the soil is a thing, and yeah, it's just this general area where the trees can grow, so we're almost in the middle of that. Should be fine, I think, if we place it over there. Alright, so now we do need to make sure we assign someone to work there. There we go. And let's place a little dirt road to go along with that. Alright. And we're back in springtime. And we're doing just fine with everything. We are also now stockpiling a little bit of herbs. Um... Let's upgrade these a little bit, because the more trees we have, the more efficient all of this will be. Uh, and that is definitely going to be helpful. Um, so what's next? We are 
we really were working towards ice fishing and that might still be a pretty good idea um but i to be honest i also kind of want to start up the quarry and that will give us a little bit of stone production and we're going to need that if we want to build more of the advanced buildings hey you can finish this wayside as well can we actually see how much fish we have zero apparently it's interesting now the quarry quarries and other more advanced buildings do require uh, an upkeep let's see we have now 10 families so we're still fine with that um i do want to double check if there's any houses that have people in them a sunken ship our ship has sunk off the coast of our fair city we should send the search party and see what they can find focus on help any survivors that will get us three adults and one children uh, and it will generally speaking not encourage migration for the peasants and laborers okay send the party and search for any go goods floating around the town needs anything we can retrieve and that will give us 40 wax which we currently have no use for um, Oh, the poor people is quite a lot honestly so i think i'm just gonna go for the wax that will restore the immigration and we're doing pretty well on people honestly and we do need to make sure we can keep up with all these people because right now i'm a little worried about the amount of food we're producing versus the amount of people we have to do that so what we're actually going to do is we are going to assign one more person to the fisherman's hut and we are we also need to start working towards tools because we are completely out of those and that is going to be an issue very quickly so we have a little bit of a race against the clock going on now because if we can't expand quickly enough we can't rely too much on all of these gatherer shots and things like that and that is going to be an issue um let's see so the ores we can build quarry over here uh, let's make sure it's at 100% efficiency. It was 99. Whoops. But, uh, the 1% won't be the biggest problem, I think. Okay. So let's make sure we also have a little road going towards that. I'm not entirely sure if this... Uh, Straight road is the most efficient way, it's probably not, but uh, we'll have to work with that for now, I think. Let's make sure we place a few road signs. There we go. And, yep, that will make sure we have optimal speed wherever people are moving. So that should be fine. I also want to make sure that once again we have a little depot next to it so we don't have to worry about having to carry around that stone across our entire base. It will make sure everything is just a little bit more efficient than the alternative. Um, speaking of food, how are we doing? We are using way, way too much food. That is not a good thing. Um, we do about that well we can build a few more gatherers huts maybe how many people do we have we have six workers yeah we have quite a bit of surplus there oh wow the efficiency is so low we could go for a hunting lodge but to be honest that's not going to be all that efficient we could also go for fishing but, um, hmm. Why are we not getting so much wood, actually? This is an abysmal production. All these trees are still growing. Hmm. -hmm. Well, we might have a, sm a small, tiny little problem. We can't actually upgrade this just yet. We can't upgrade this either. So 
what we're going to have to do is work towards getting those mines up and running. In order to do that, we're going to need lumber. Uh, we have lumber now, we have no lumber now anymore. Oh, this is awesome. Cut down some more trees, yo. Actually, what we can actually do is help out with that a little bit. Let's pause there for a moment and queue up the mines while we have the lumber. Uh, but what we can do is actually make sure we have someone working in the quarry. Just one person will do for now. Um, and we can also just set... Let's see, where do we want to cut trees? The fertility here is really nice. Um, same goes for here, but for example over here and over here we don't really care about that much. So we might as well just take down those trees. Um, so let's have our workers that have nothing to do cut down some trees and boost our wood production just a tiny little bit. Okay, so now the production is actually a lot higher again. So it uh, goes a little bit up and down, I think, with the fact that we only have summer for part of the year and probably in the winter this is uh, sl a little bit slower as well i'm not entirely sure if it works that way but it uh, would actually make sense um firewood are we doing quite well on now in order to make tools we are going to need um a toolsmith and the toolsmith will actually require both iron as well as coal to work so we basically need three buildings just to get those tools to up and running. Once we do, we basically have all the base resources that we need and a lot of stuff that we also need for upgrades. So it's, it sounds like huge investment. It is. Uh, but all in all, we should be fine. Uh, remember that we are also getting quite a lot of coin now. Um, we are also using coins for all our advanced buildings, like for example the quarry. Remember the quarry also needs lumber, so um, that's another reason that we need to watch our lumber production. We might actually have to build another forester at some point. Um, but yeah, we do need to make sure that we don't overextend. So one thing at a time. Um, I am really worried now about this production over here. But yeah, that's why we were building tools. So let's stick to the plan. All right. Um, let's see. We will want to build an iron mine. Can we... Fit that in over here, maybe? No, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. This probably makes more sense. Um, and then we're out. Okay. Let's build a little road to make sure our workers have somewhere to go. The snap, it tends to snap in like a lower L form. Which is a little bit annoying, but uh, nothing we can't overcome. Let's build one miner. We don't need huge productions of this just yet. How much gold do we need for our more unrest on the mainland? Are we going to send them stuff? Well, we don't want our lumber and firewood to go there. Uh, I also don't necessarily want more immigrants. Um, um, have our stuff, I guess. Not happy about it. Um, 75 coins for a coal mine. Now the benefit of a coal mine is actually that you can also burn coal in your houses. And it's also a downside because you don't necessarily want to build, uh, burn coal in your houses. But um, it provides you another thing to do with that if you're low on stuff to burn to keep your people warm in the winter. So um, There we go. It's actually being built really quickly, so let's assign another person to mine. It should automatically, I think, spread it across these two. Uh, we are now down to three workers. Let's assign one more person to carry around stuff. Um, how are we doing on homes? Still 10. We have 11, so some to spare there as well. There's more kitties incoming, so... We have a lot of firewood, we have a lot of food. I'm still worried about the food. But, yep. Nothing we can really do at the moment. We've already assigned the maximum amount of people to this. 
we have two people in the herbalist hut actually maybe we can go down with one for that um in a pinch we can always upgrade the fisherman's hut should we maybe do that let's just go for that might as well play safe uh, we have three workers and three carriers i think we'll be fine stop complaining are getting some nice amount of iron as well as stone and coal. And the coal is actually going straight into the house as well, I fear. But we are going to be building a toolsmith. And um, might as well keep this close. There we go. Straight across. From the mine, well actually it's these mines that we're talking about, but uh, let's keep it close to the inventory. Stockpile, whatever you want to call it. What is it? What is the formal name of this? A, a, a depot? Depot? Depot. Depot, right? Yeah, it's depot. Um, yeah, doing pretty good so far. Year number three. Third winter incoming. Um, good on food, we're good on firewood. And let's see where we can take it from there. Um, it helps if we are actually making tools. And uh, now we are getting really low on workers. Uh, but I do think it's important to get some of these tools going. We could actually pull off the tool maker once we get a few tools. But we do need those tools to start upgrading. For example, our fisherman hut. We don't need that many tools. Uh, but we do need some. And this fisherman's hut is apparently still producing quite a lot of fish even during the winter. So um, I think this will be key to actually keeping our people uh, alive long term. We could actually consider replacing the um, gatherer shelter with another fisherman hut. Because as you can see the quantity produced here is almost identical to the one being produced over here. Uh, and that's without any upgrades here. So one upgrade that's two upgrades and yeah this is looking really nice honestly playing it a little bit safe here but we are playing on extreme difficulty remember so we don't want to overextend ourselves and we ha do now have a little bit of extra production going on here 21 adults still so this is uh, about Three times the size of our initial colony and now the royal tax increases. The crown has endeavors all around the globe and it's a duty of each subject to help make that happen once again. Yeah, sure, we can increase the textile trade fee. It's not like I'm selling any of that or producing any of that for the moment, for that matter. Okay, so let's see. We are now getting some tools. So what can we do? We can upgrade a lot of buildings actually and I think we should probably focus on upgrading what we have before we start expanding. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. Uh, it will make whatever we have better, more efficient. And, well, if you're into things like Dyson Sphere, you probably like efficient, and so do I. Um, but in this game, efficiency is really key. Because every person matters, and making sure you do get the most bang for your buck is really important. So, it, these buildings have upgrades that expand the slots, like most of the other buildings that we've seen so far. But these up optimization upgrades are very key as well. They will reduce your upkeep. And as you can see, we need coins, we need coal, and we need iron. So basically, upgrading this will ensure that you can do more with less. Um, this will just simply boost your production. But this will actually make sure you can have the same production for less coins. Of course, it does cost you initial investment, that, but it will basically earn itself back really quickly. Same here. As you can see, the upkeep is quite significant on these buildings. And reducing that just means that we have more um, more of everything going on, basically, without having to worry about too much about how much stuff is going in and out of the building. We do now have another adult. We are now up to 23. We have four workers. We do need to really carefully watch how our food is doing. But even in the winter, we do seem to be able to keep up now. Um, so for the moment, I think we're doing just fine with that. We could actually expand a little further. Um, we have quite a lot of tools now. We have quite a lot of stone now. So we can pretty much upgrade whatever we want. But our main bottleneck now seems to be 
our coins. Now, there is an easy way to fix that. Let me see where it is. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we do need to do research for that or if we can actually already build it. I think we might actually be able to do that already. Docks. Yes, we want to have docks and that will allow us to trade with the mainland. Basically, a ship comes in every now and then and you can export whatever you have too much of. It doesn't really feel that we have too much of anything right now. Um, but in all honesty, things like tools and stone is probably something we can afford to... Um, reduce a little bit, sell a little bit, get some more points and invest that right back into our colony. Upgrade our buildings and make more stuff and then sell more stuff. So we are going to save up to 100 coins. Um, how many people did we have? Should we put someone in our little herbalist hut? Not entirely sure. Let's not for the moment. And let's make sure everything is actually being transported around. All right, so now we have 100 gold. Let's check out where, if we can actually fit our building somewhere. I'm not entirely sure if these ships will actually be able to make it to our dock. Uh, hmm, hmm, uh, let's make a quick save. Yes. Very bad thing to do, maybe. I don't know. Actually wondering. Okay, the... This side needs to be facing the water. So let's place it over here. And let's hope the ship can actually reach. I'm not entirely sure how that mechanic works. Um, in my test game I actually was on the on the ocean. So obviously on the ocean side at this. Something like this. We have a ship. <laughs> we have a ship kind of just floating around here. It has been here I think since the start of the game. Um... Oh, it can escape. Okay, that's fine. Is the ship gonna come to our dock? Is, is, that, is that what it's supposed to do? Um, let's have a dock worker as well. We have 10 people incoming, so that should be fine. Now we can trade. The way this works, actually let's pause the game there for a moment. The way this works is that you can set up a trade deal we can buy and sell individual goods. Um, probably something worth discussing in the next episode. Um, we are getting close to half an hour now. And I think it's a good place to call it. So let's focus on doing some trading. Getting some money and getting some upgrades. After surviving our first winter. We actually expanded our colony by a lot in this episode. We now have mines up and running. We have tool production up and running. We have 11 homes. Which I think we're actually using all of them by now. Yep. As you can see, we have 11 families in our colony while well, we started out with four. So, pretty nice development. We did some research. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.